then so it's pull day, just arrived. The gym was pretty rammed. Now it, well, now it isn't. So that's a win. I'm here early because it's like nine o'clock, 20 past nine, something like that, rather than the usual midnight because I don't like training as late as I am. Also, you might be wondering, oh, where, where have all the frequent videos been going? And basically, I'm ill, so I've not been recording every session I've been doing. But today we are because I felt like it. And uh, I'm going to be doing something a smidge different. Well, not massively, but I'm doing a little bit higher volume than I typically do just because I felt like it yesterday when I did push and it felt good by the end of the session. So today I'm going to apply the same logic to pull. So a lot of things that would otherwise have been like two sets are going to be like three. Let's go get started. Warm ups. And on this one in the warm up. Easily one of my favourite handles. One more warm up. Okay. I should still be able to stack that. Sleep schedule has been so awful recently. I've been going to bed at like five, six, getting up at like one to three. It's been bad. But like my eyes have been in such searing pain ever since the Arnold Expo that I can't be awake when it's late. It's been bad. I swear three years straight I've got ill after the Arnold because shake hands with a lot of people. And I think my immune system's crap. Like, because I don't leave the house besides to go to the gym. I don't see people to mingle, to get like desensitized to illness anymore. So like, I used to work at Tesco. Couldn't get me ill when I worked at Tesco because you see some strange creatures on a day-to-day -day basis there. Now, now I just, I, I so much as look at the, the weather the wrong way and I just get wrecked. Hopefully it doesn't last much longer because it's, it's truly to the point where for a good portion of the day, I can't open my eyes. So my plan is like three sets, each one getting progressively lighter and for progressively more reps. So like first set will be pretty heavy, not too much care for sensation, just with decent enough form, moving decent enough weight to progress it. Set to like 10 to 15. No, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I set three will be like really quite light compared to what I can do. Still ideally to failure, but uh, yeah. Strap in, get the strap. Okay. I hope I can still stack this for at least five. Oh, it's heavy. Heavy. So that was a good five. That was better than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. By the way, if you guys haven't already, make sure you subscribe. According to the analytics, anytime one of these videos gets above like 500 views, which pull day seems to be the worst day for, interestingly, uh, the majority of people are not already following. So, or subscribed. So fix that one. Day. Uh, I went to the cinema last night. <laughs> And uh, I was told by one of the staff after we left, because I, I, I'm, I get to see him very often, so we know the staff quite well. Apparently I made somebody cry, because I told them to, to get off the phone, but I threw in a word that they didn't like. <laughs> it was pretty simple. We were like 10 minutes into the film and they just wouldn't get off their phone. And that isn't going to fly. So I threw a quick, get off your phone, you and then it, the, they, about five minutes later, they left and I was like, job well done. And then they, um, it was great. Not a peep out of anyone for the rest of the film. But at the end of the film, went out, 
I was talking to to our friend at the front desk, and she's like, "By the way, did you uh, did you say something to someone about being on the phone?" I was like, "I may have." She's like, "Yeah, I can't repeat what you said," and I was like, "No, you probably can't." <laughs> Turns out the people had left left the left the film crying because they were just offended at the fact they'd been told off for something. But like, they were grown adults. It's not like kids. Like they were easily in their thirties. No one's ever cried before when I've shushed them in the cinema. Because the way I see it is everyone in the cinema is thinking the same thing. If some ball bag sat on, if some ball bags sat in the cinema on their phone during a film and everyone can see it, everyone's thinking, God, someone needs to put that person down. And uh, I'm happy to be the one that says something because I was inspired by this bloke when I was a kid. I remember I was watching one of the X-Men films in the cinema when I was like 11. And this guy, he was sat next to someone who he didn't know. And the guy kept answering his phone. Like three times throughout the film, he answered his phone in the middle of the film. And obviously we were like 10, so we couldn't do anything about it. We were kids. But this guy, he did something about it. He was a hero. But to this day, I hope he's having a good day. Because <laughs> he, um, he was like, mate, get off your phone. And that was that. And then maybe like 15 minutes later, he answers the phone again. And he's like, mate, if you answer the phone again, there's going to be a problem. And then another 15 minutes later, that fella answered his phone a third time. And there was indeed a problem. And I remember me and my friend, we were, he, he was brilliant. I, to this day, I'm like, I remember thinking I want to be just like that guy when I grew up. To have the balls to say something to somebody that's doing wrong in the cinema. It was, it was thoroughly entertaining to watch that. Now, if I'm in the cinema and somebody's either A, on the phone or B, talking, these are two very simple rules. I don't feel like I'm a dick for saying any of this. I, I will happily throw a shush because I know I'm in the right and I know that everybody else in the screen is thinking the same thing. It's just that the majority of like, um, what's the word? British, uh, culture is to just be silently annoyed, but it's like, nah, I'm, I'm not going to be silently annoyed. I'll say something in the cinema. Uh, I've never had somebody walk out crying before. That was the first. I've had people not like it when I tell them to shush, but they always end up shushing, but it was quite funny. I'm happy that it happened because I know for a fact now that that person will never do it again. If it upset them that much, the fact that they got called out in the middle of the cinema, that they walked out crying, I guarantee you they will never do it again. Apparently they're limitless members like we are, so they get a similar all the time. So they should have known better. The way I said it, I did a public service. It's like now, from now on, whenever they're in the cinema, they'll think twice before going on their phones because they know, they, they, they know that somebody behind them might have words to say. Enough of me waffling, shall I? Let's do another set. I just can't believe they cried. I said five words. They didn't even look back at me. They had no idea it was me. The only reason the staff knew that it was me that said something is because they know that I'm in the habit of doing that. <laughs> very self-righteous about this, I know, but if you talk or go on your phone in the cinema, there's very few worse things that we could do in humanity. All right, let's go. Nope. Right. One more. As I can confirm that I've made clear we're in the wrong shaker again and it overflowed. It's like, I don't know, it's just not sealing properly. And I've got a really sticky bottle. Less than ideal. I need to probably throw this shaker out, which is sad because it's like the only one of this version I've got. Somebody's going to be watching this video going, you're evil, you upset someone in the cinema. They're like, it's just the fact that people these days don't get told off for things. Like, I can't imagine being a grown adult, leaving the cinema, having done something wrong, going to the staff and being like, I did something wrong. And somebody told me off for doing something wrong. Can you do something about that? And the staff going, well, did you do something wrong? And them having to go, yeah. Or did he have to be so mean about it? Like, 
I just love that the staff had to fully be like, well, he's not wrong because it's, it's the policy. If you disagree, unsubscribe. I don't want no cinema talkers watching my videos. Not today. Also, you know how I put the, the Nautilus pullover in one of my pull days? I don't know why, but it's not here anymore. I presume there was probably something wrong with it because Ryan isn't in the habit of getting rid of good machines for no reason, so I presume there was probably something wrong with it. Sad times. Maybe it'll come back. You never know. But until then, I have to figure something else out again. I'm still not entirely sure what I'm going to do for today. I'm doing a bit of an off-the-cuff pull session. Not too much planned, just train hard, go home, because I don't want to overthink it. And I enjoyed yesterday, and I'm a bit sore from it. It felt good while I was here, and I progressed. So there's that. It'll be interesting, because for some reason, these pull days get less views than push, or even legs. The leg day videos were outclassing the pull days, which is strange to me. I set one, I did the stack. Set two, I did three quarters of the stack. And set two, I'll do half. I'd love to need to pin a 20 kilo plate, but this is such a heavy, such a heavy cable stack compared to all of the other cable stacks in here. Just like other cable stacks, you could like single arm lap pull down things pretty easily. Stacks like the pre core cables or the Cybex cables that you did often. But this lap pull down station has got such a heavy stack, it's mad. Ain't no single arm pull down this stack. And if somebody could, they would be the widest person you've ever seen. Okay, set three. For anybody wondering what I'm using to strap in, they're figure eight straps. You can use pretty much any you like. Realistically, it doesn't matter until you're like stupid strong. Like the brand of strap you matter probably doesn't matter. The brand, brand of strap that you use probably doesn't matter unless you are like strong man strong that are deadlifting 300 plus kilos. I don't think anyone's ever broke a strap less than that, or it's unlikely. And I don't deadlift either way, so I don't think these straps are going to break my straps. But if you're going to use, use code KALE at MyProtein, because support your boy. Oh, that feels light. This is going to hurt by the time this set's done. Okay, that'll do. On to the next. Tell you what, the hardest part about any of these videos is finding the angle because preview screen is so small. Nice. I'm really wondering what we went to see at the cinema, by the way. He's Ghostbusters. And I've never seen a film come out in recent times that's been hit so hard with the marvelification of the way people speak to each other. Like, no one in that film spoke to each other the way humans do. Everything was a quip or a one-liner, and it was just too much. Hey, right. and it wasn't, it, it did that thing that like every film since Thor Ragnarok has done where there can't ever be a serious moment without undercutting it with a, with a joke. Just every, so many films do this nowadays and wonder why they fail. I don't know. My approach with these sets is that there's a couple of different valid thought processes here that conflict with each other, right? And a lot of people think that you kind of have to be one or the other. A lot of people are like, oh yeah, your connection to your muscle when you're lifting doesn't matter. All that matters is mechanical tension, how much weight you're moving and how close to fairing you are, which is true. But at the end of the day, it's a bit of both. Like for example, this first set that I'll do on each of the exercises, all I'm really bothered about is making sure the form's good enough and moving as heavy as a weight as I possibly can until I can't. Sensation be damned. Set two is more middle ground where I'm still trying to shift pretty heavy weight, but caring a little bit more about how it feels. And set three 
if I use the weight that I'm using for set three for set one, I, I, it'd be endless, the set. But I'm really trying to make it about sensation on that third set. I think. And it's nice because I'm getting quite a good pump, which again, still not exactly an indicator of growth, but there is there's common sense behind both approaches. So doing both makes sense. Get as strong as you can across all three, you know? Anyway, let's do a set. <laughs> okay and now stack for set two i reckon then maybe like half a stack for set three adult job for this weekend is cleaning my grill because my grill's wrecked it's so moldy from last year somehow so we're gonna have to like demold it probably re-season it because i want to do a lot of barbecue and smoking meats this year so i need to get that sorted it's gonna be a long day the one problem without religiously tracking this session is that i have no idea when i did my last set so i'm going completely by feel and feel can often be unreliable so i'm having trouble looking at my camera because my eyes are going fucked up again I can't wait to be back to normal. You take good health for granted, I swear to God. Set two with the stack this time, although it's probably not going to feel too much different than having the 20 kilo plate pinned to it because of the way cable ratios work and that. But there's only one way to find out. And then set three, we'll do like three quarters to half this way and just really try and make sure that there's nothing left in me for that. <laughs> I hope somebody's counting because I lost track. See, now if I try to keep it strict, like no body English whatsoever. Nope. Like I needed way longer between last set and this one to be ready. I don't know why. I'm pretty sure that that last set with the stack was like a 15 rapper or so. I'm pretty sure that I've done like 20 with the stack on this at some point in the past. This is going to feel really like that. So it's really about like pumpy squeezy stuff. It's 125 versus 200 just. Mm. Ow. Okay. So, trying to decide what I want to do next. I need something more upper back focused. 
but I don't want to do a T-bar though, because I did that on the other pull bay. I don't want that to be too much crossover with this one. Although I do the, there's a lot of crossover no matter what you do. At the end of the day, all back exercises are just pull horizontally, vertically, overhand, neutral. And even then the overhand and neutral thing is just to help dictate what you do with the scapula. You can still train your upper back with a neutral grip, which is what I might do now. Yeah. All right. More rows. Difference between this one and the last one is that I want my elbows to pass my torso a little bit more, and I want my motion through the scapula versus the last one, which was just me trying to hit my lats. So we'll see. And again, I don't know how long I've rested, which is a bit of a problem. A little stopwatch. Same again, three sets. We still need to do abs. I'm supposed to do abs at the start. Cock that up again. Habits. Old habits die hard. I really hope I can still stack this. Okay. May have been a bit heavy. That's annoying. We'll consider that set one. <clears throat> Go again. A little bit more sensible this time. I may have undershot it. <laughs> Just a little bit. Last one. <laughs> it's like eight, nine ish sets of back. I'd normally do something single arm as well, but I don't think it's really warranted today. The extra volume per set, per exercise, kind of fried. So thinking arms and abs, and then done. My arms at the minute are like, I think the thickest I've ever seen them. I'm definitely most vascular because I'm heavier now too. And uh, like the refill ending my diet has, I've, I'm leaner because I can tell by like new veins where there wasn't before, even though I'm like nine pounds up in two weeks. It won't be nine pounds of fat because I'm eating like two, max 2,500 calories a day. It's just that when I diet, I diet hard. So big refill to be had. And now it slows way down now that I'm back up to like homeostasis. Um, good news is got a wedding on Monday, brought a suit when I weighed 10 pounds lighter, knowing that it was going to be a problem. And I still fit that just fine. So like, that's another way that I know I've not put on any fat, which is good. And, uh, it's interesting. I want 200 pounds on the scale to not look fat, but I think realistically I might have to push further than 200 pounds for it to be a long, productive, uh, gaining phase. Cause 200 pounds, six months, maybe I want longer. Uh, I just don't want to get over fat, but I'll do what it takes to be bigger and stronger. So we'll see. Let's do some arms. We're recording to like, have a look camera, we're going to be like, right, I've heard them from this.
Oh, my elbow felt funny during that bit. I wish I was a smidge taller. If I was a little bit taller, this would feel just a little bit more comfortable. Because, like, I'm almost able to tiptoe to get my arm completely over the bench. But, nice. Start of the pump. Many sets to go. I really need to clean out the SD card on this camera. <laughs> There's only, like, two hours worth of training space left, according to the recording. I mean, I'm recording in 4K, 60 frames a second, so, like, that dramatically cuts it, but like two hours is what? Two and a half more sessions. I need to clean it out after I upload this one. But to be fair, I've never cleaned it out before. So like 4K, 60 frames a second, being able to hold like 24 hours of footage. It is one heavy duty SD card. And I should hope so, considering the price tag. Right. From 12s to 10s. Bad knee bar. I might do that. <laughs> this gets hard very quickly. <laughs> and it's hardest in the middle. I'm very veiny today. I don't know if it will show up on the camera because of the blown out lighting, but we are. I'm praying down so many times this week. It feels like I never stop. Some like proper old school concentration curls. I haven't done these since I was a kid. I feel like so much relentless like forearm versus anywhere else. I'd like to do something dual handed though. Just for. I got this. Curl. Maybe. I can never decide. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I'll tell you what, my eyes are killing me. Oh, I miss not having problems. Don't take good health for granted. It's like, you know, when your nose isn't blocked, you don't think about it. When it is blocked, you contemplate every day you ever took that for granted. That's where I'm at right now with my eyes. And being underneath these lights is not a good sign. Biceps is one of them that's way too easy to give in just because it feels cramped. Stop giving in. More. More. And another. More. <laughs> Set three or whatever we're on. I think I've done like four or five sets of biceps now. I'll uh, I'll go single arm on this, just because it feels nicer. 
will require less weight though. It's a little bit comfier on the elbow. Everything's a trade up or trade off. And I still have to do abs. The ab machine is behind you and it's staring at me saying, don't skip me. Don't skip me. And I'm not going to, but I really want to. I can't stand trading abs. But I need to for that very reason. Fun. Okay. Single arm stuff. Left arm first because my left arm's a bit dodgy. Need to be further back, I think. There we go. <laughs> At about four there where I wanted to stop, <laughs> but I'm trying to not. <laughs> All right, like in a second, we'll do the right arm. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <sighs> okay. I think it's a good session when your phone is getting a bit wet in your pocket. <laughs> Boats are. Kale, this is why there's something wrong with your eyes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Tight, probably a little bit light, so we'll slide one more little thing onto it. I don't know if you saw me do that. Just a two and a half or 1.25 or whatever they are on this. I think this is technically in pounds because it's American, but yeah. A friendly reminder that when you see people doing dumbbell only exercises in a real gym on their knees, and they're doing like eight different exercises for the same body part on their knees in the same location with the same set of dumbbells, probably somebody to not follow. Just two stage common sense would tell you that one because I don't know how these people have millions of followers. Probably because they put some hardcore badass music to it, but in reality they're prancing around on their knees doing shit all. But it's crazy. On, on one end of the spectrum, you've got the guys out here arguing between two pretty valid exercises. You've got like the people who attach their entire masculinity to how much they can barbell press, who are pretty big and strong. Then you've got the camp where it's like, no, machines only. And good machines like smith and you know good exercise and they're like pretty big and strong so both are winning and they're arguing all day every day on social media over who's the hardest corest bodybuilderist person but then you've got the people with the millions of followers that are doing just the shittest of shit exercises and just nobody ever says a word to them and i don't understand it getting old another dead giveaway that you're watching one of those guys videos is they're incredibly oiled up have no understanding as to how gravity works because they're just doing things that Let's be real here. The conversation began with, hey, bro, record this. My back looks great. Doesn't matter what body part they're trying to train. My back looks great. Look how oiled up I am. And they'll be like holding dumbbells out in front of them, rowing them towards themselves, stood up, going, yeah, this is a back exercise. Like, you, yeah. Oh. Gullible people will be gullible, I suppose. Anyway, slightly heavier on this set, I suppose. Thank <laughs> you. 
That felt like just as many reps. I could, I should probably rest between arms, but I'm not going to because I'm fine. <clears throat> Let's try abs. The chair of doom. Nearly done though, and it's not even eleven o'clock. It's an early night. Still gonna be up till five, no matter what I do. Abs. That's now not as heavy as it was. 64. Maybe we'll stack this one then. <laughs> Maybe. <sighs> oh. <sighs> Set two. Just do three. There's nothing worse than ab cramp from abs. The worst feeling. <clears throat> Last one. Well, that was a crunchy one. Pun intended, or I guess not. I should have dropped the weight. Oh, though. I wonder what the thumbnail for this video is going to be. I have no idea, but uh, we'll call it there. I've been in the gym for a while, longer than I thought I would. We'll see. Hope you all enjoyed.